lake outside of Arizona and Utah, outside of Page, Arizona. It's on the border of the south, the southern part of Utah. And beautiful lake. They made it in the 40s. You just can't beat it. It's like Grand Canyon, and they dumped a whole bunch of water inside of it. So with Lake Powell, they're like, oh, we're so cool, and we're going to change the laws on two-stroke and four-stroke jet skis. So I have two-stroke jet skis, OK? They're 96s. They were like bulletproof. I could run these things through the mud. I could hit docks with them. They were bulletproof. I never broke anything on them. And then they changed the rules that we had to go to four strokes. So I'm like, OK, we'll sell these. We'll get some new ones. So we went out, and we bought these 05s. You can kind of see them in the background, and that's the money that I paid to do. But <laughs> they, <laughs> they had a little bit of an issue. One of them had a catastrophic engine failure that we didn't know when we bought them. When you're buying a car, make sure that it runs. That's always a good thing, but we didn't for some reason. So when that happened, I had one jet ski for the whole summer. You know how bad one jet ski is? When something goes wrong, you run out of gas, you can't get back. That happened once. But with that, we finally got our new one back that just had been repaired. A whole bunch of money sunk into it <coughs> after the engine was rebuilt. And we went to Pueblo Reservoir. Actually, my parents went to Pueblo Reservoir without me because I was at school. Now it was my mom. OK. So they go to Pueblo Reservoir. They're going to go have fun on jet skis and you know, ride around for the day. But then they get there, and the dudes won't let them in because the muscles and there was water in the engine because the dude tested it in Denver that made sure it ran, apparently. But then they wasted a whole bunch of time, never actually got on the lake. So they had to drive back to Colorado Springs pick me up from school, and then we got back in the truck. We all drove down to Pueblo. I did my homework on my way down. And after I got there, we finally got past the dude, and the dude actually waved at us, which was really good. So we got down here. We put the boats in the water. We're cruising up the lake. Do, 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 do. And then we get to this point. And my dad says, I'm not getting the horsepower out of this that I should have out of 210 horsepower. That's more than a Toyota Corolla. So we're just kind of like, OK, maybe there's something wrong. So we kind of slow down. We stop. And half of his jet ski is sinking. And like the whole back end is like underwater. That's never good with a jet ski. So we're like, OK, maybe we can go to shore. We can dump out all the water and then book it back to the marina. So as you can see right there, that little blue stuff, that is gravel. So we're like, OK, we're going to go to the shore. And we're thinking the shore is like way up here. So we hit the gravel, and our engine gets all that gravel stuck in it. It's like <laughs> That's not a good sound either. So <laughs> we're, we're like, OK, this is not good. Maybe we go out back to the open water, and then we'll just tow it back. So my dad's like, get the booty rope down, Josh. I'm like, OK, so the rope that you told me that I never need, and you wouldn't buy it for me for Christmas? That rope? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. I'm like, OK, well, next time I want like a rope, maybe you should buy it for me. But anyway, so I throw up the rope, and he, he grabs on. He hooks it to the front of his. My mom grabs the other, the other end of the rope and hooks it to the back of mine. And mine's smoking really bad, and it's making really bad sounds, and I'm trying to rev it up and try and get it going. But I'm towing an 800-pound jet ski that's halfway in the water, probably with another 800 pounds of water inside of it. And I'm towing it along with 4,000 RPMs. I'm hearing this really bad sound. And mine's just smoking really bad. And I'm thinking, I, I don't know if I can make it all the way back to the marina that we started at, which is <coughs> But luckily, there's a southern marina. And the, the jet ski at this point is basically underwater. And we're towing it back, and my mom's like, you got to go faster. Finally, we get to this other marina, and we get there, and we like just sit down in the dock, like, <sighs> OK, that was close. So then my dad had a bum a ride that drove all the way around. It took him like an hour and a half to get down to here, get the truck, drive all the way back, and pick us up. So after I towed him back, my voodoo rub, of course. But then we went to Cracker Barrel, which was nice, because we were all drenched, and that was nice, too. But you know, anyway. Um, we had to take him back to the shop, and we got him fixed. Both of them had the rocks taken out of the intake, and all that made it sink was this little washer between the drive shaft and the hull, um, which was about a dollar part. Um, and then we had to spend all the money to get the 
rocks out of the intake, which was not fun. But then we went to go test them at this other lake outside of Denver. And it was like end of November at this point. As you, if you can tell, I don't think you can tell, but there's snow on those mountains behind there. And like water in November jet skiing equals cold. So I had my wetsuit on, my neoprene socks. That time I didn't sink anything until next season. Then I sunk the other one. But that's another story for another time. Thank you. <laughs>